Hi everybody, welcome back to the Desma Works channel and today um, making a start on a customer's bike. So what we've got here is a Ducati 848 and there's some issues with the engine as well as the general condition of the bike needs looking at as well. So um, there's two pieces that I'm going to be doing in this early stage. So I'm going to be just taking a look around the bike and making a note of all of the issues and faults that I can find. Um, and then I'm going to be dropping the engine out. Now another garage has looked at the bike and it's showing low compression in the horizontal cylinder. So I'm going to be dropping the engine out and I'm going to be taking apart the heads so that I can have a look into the top end of the engine. So at this stage I'm just doing an investigation on the bike and what we need to do next. So let me grab the camera and I'll give you a, a quick whiz round the bike and what I can initially see. Okay so first off calipers have been removed from the front end and a sat up on the top. You can see that the headlight mount has been broken off. Then there's just general wear and tear around this side. Um, you can see there that the corrosion has got underneath the paint and that's loose. It's had the um, through fairing crash mounts which I'm not a massive fan of so I need to take that off to be able to get into the actual bike or the engine sorry. Got the servo motor for the exhaust is still on so it's got a standard um, front end to the system and then it's got a set of Terminioni slash cut exhausts. Pegs and everything look to be okay. Um, wheels look good, nothing too much there. Now we've got the frame caps so hopefully that means that the bolts are in reasonably good condition so hopefully we don't have any seizure issues in taking this apart. Everything's loose around here um, so not much needs doing it. Front mudguard has got some like carbon tape stroke sheet in on the front. I don't know if that's because it's damaged. And you can see on here a bit of broken fairing on the bolt there. Some corrosion on the headlight mount. Got aftermarket levers. Um, batteries missing as we can see. Got a number of loose connections around here. Obviously the main battery connections are disconnected but it's a couple of bits and pieces down here but there's just a test plug I'm not sure what that goes to off the top of my head I think side stand switch fuel tanks been off so it's all disconnected and you can see that we're missing the mounting arrangement uh, for the tank oh no it's in place good um, that's the tank connection we've got what looks to be an aftermarket peg and then uh, hmm very tasty aftermarket stand and then quite heavily corroded chain no hugger which is always a bit of a shame on these because it makes it get really messy under here the engine doesn't look like it's been on its side so there's no scrapes in the obvious positions you know, there's no damage to the pegs or the swing arm no damage either on the front fork axle I'm assuming that we are still a wet clutch on this because it's obviously in its main cases so it's a mod that's not been done and uh, as you can see it's a little bit cloudy so I don't know if there's oil or water or what in there a little bit of wear and tear on the end there um, but nothing major so that's a quick run through um, as I said at the start of the video, aim is to try and find out what's going on with the engine and then we will make recommendations to the customer on what's needed as the next steps. So first off what I need to do is I need to get to a position where I can get access to the engine really easily. So I'm going to start taking off 
all of the peripherals so we'll get rid of fuel tank, exhaust, we'll drain the coolant, drain the oil um, and all those bits and pieces just so that we're in a position to be able to see what what the overall condition of the engine's like in a bit more detail. We'll pop the air box off once I've got to that position. Um, I may even um, take off the heads with the engine in the frame just so you can see that process um, because I've not done that beforehand. I don't often, from a filming point of view, I don't often get to get the full bike in the garage so this is a bit of a novelty from a customer point of view because usually I just get sent the engines. Um, so this one I've got the opportunity to film a little, a little bit more when we take this bike apart. Okay, let's start getting into these uh, peripherals and start taking them all off. Okay, first bit we need to do, let's get the tank off. I think that it's just rested on there. So it should be a pretty straightforward thing to do. I can see that, you can see you know, normally these are your uh, drain pipes that come out from these two connectors here. You've got one fuel line here and another over there. The bolt is undone and we're free on the key side so I think I can just literally pull that back and it's going to be off. So let me just position the camera so you can see this better and I'll do that. Interesting, there was a lot of fuel in there. Okay, so I've got um, plug is disconnected where it's already been off. And I think, yeah, we're the same on the front cylinder. It's actually laying down at the front there. What I need to do now is I need to get the air box out. A retaining clamp just inside there. The screw is on the other side. We've got one down here as well. That will get me undone on the throttle bodies. Then I need I need to make sure that the air intake hoses or tubes are disconnected. I'll disconnect any of the electrics, which should be just these pieces on the top. Okay, so I'm just going to crack on and get these bolts out first on the air tubes. So a little piece to watch out for on these. These ones have been over tightened before which has sort of crushed the end of the air tubes. Let's just get the other one off and see what we find on that one. Well this one actually looks like it's been damaged. There's all uh, putty in that around it. So. missing a bolt. Um, it's got the rubber seal in place though. You can see that's where your air filter would sit. Normally just pull that out. Gives you access into the air box. So I just need to get a flathead screwdriver and undo Roll tube clamps, which should be good to come up, I believe. Okay, getting a little ahead of myself. What I'm going to do, because um, I need to get to the throttle cables, I thought I'd be able to get round to them without any issue. Uh, so I'm going to drop off the radiator. Well, I'm going to drop out the coolant, drop off the radiator. I'm going to remove the front master cylinder so I can get these calipers out of the way. Um, yeah, because that will give me a lot more. And I need to take off 
some of the sort of periphery stuff because I'm going to have to anyway just gives me better access because what I've also noticed is I need to get off um now I can do it when I lift it but I just want to make sure I've got easy access to the fuel pressure regulators underneath here which has got a connection obviously I've got this the potentiometer for the throttle I need to get that off and then the throttle cables go down behind the radiator they're they're about here um, so I need to get to those easily I could do it all just by lifting out the airbox but it just becomes a bit messy so I'm going to do it properly rather than taking shortcuts loosened off the um, throttle tube just so I could pull the calipers through so I didn't have to break any lines um, I'm not fully tightening it back up because I need to get these off in a second when we pull the airbox off now question is have we been given a bike with coolant in it uh, yes we have okay so we will drain that off um, that there is the brake switch that I disconnected. I, sorry, I got in the way of the camera. Right, let me just drain off the coolant. Best place to do it is on the side of your water pump. There is a drain plug here. I will get a bucket. I will crack that. Once it's loose, I'll take the radiator cap off, fully take it out and drain it off. So let me just do that. There you go, we're draining off. Doesn't look a fantastic colour. Might not have been changed in quite a while. I'm assuming it used to be green. Once that's drained off fully, that will enable me to take the pipes off without risk of any significant spillage. I'll have a little bit left in the radiator because of where the hoses are set, situated. And I'll have a little bit in the lower part of the engine where there's some pipe work that goes to the horizontal head etc but I should be able to get the vast majority of my hoses off to be able to give me better access to the engine okay time to disconnect the hoses so we can get the radiator off interesting they were quite loose actually Let's pull these uh Jubilee clips back. Okay, that's that one off. Might get a bit fluid here with this one. Depending where it is. Oh, a little bit. Just bring the bucket back. I'm just gonna put you down for a second. Okay, there was there was only like literally as I said, just got the level in the radiator that was just dripping out slightly. So to get the radiator off, I've got one bolt on this side. It then drops forward, much like most of the Ducati series of uh, superbikes. I'll then be able to push it out. Now, I've got two fans to disconnect. One's One I can see quite clearly, so it shouldn't be too difficult for me once I drop this forward. The other, I think, is this one here. Um, I'm assuming that is the one. That's because the horn is on these little connectors here so then I've got this hose let me just uh, ping that off and I'll pull that little hose off as well mm, bit scabby now as I was saying it just pops forward okay now I've dropped the radiator forward. We can just disconnect the two electrical connectors and then I can just pull it out of its last little hook. Let me do that off camera. Okay, back from the coffee. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to strip out the battery box to get that out of the way. Um, so it's got one, two, three bolts there. I'll just need to disconnect the ECU. Uh, and I'll probably need to drop off the starter unless I can get the solenoid off, which I don't know if I can. Let's... I'll have to see in a second, but right, let's just get this off of there.
running away with myself sorry so battery box is off disconnected all of the loom that sits on the battery box to make that easier i've just got to start pulling off the connections to be able to separate the loom and just move that out of the way which is what you've just seen me doing here so i've taken off the expansion bottle um, which the loom goes to the back of i really need to disconnect the servo actuator and so i can remove that um, and then i've got a number of different connections just to pop off as i are going across so i'm just going to crack on with doing that cables has been torn to pieces loom is fully out of the way now so I can, I've got clear access to the engine um, what I need to do now is just drop off the exhaust so I am going to be taking it all off so I need to take off at the manifold at the manifold all the slash pipe will need to come off so I'll basically start taking it off from the back and work my way forwards and then I need to get the side stand off disconnect the gear linkage I just need to pop this connector off for the vertical cylinders um, coil stick I was forgetting what to call it then um, I will eventually um, need to take off this but I want to get to a point I drain the oil then I can disconnect the cooler on this side I'll just need to disconnect the rear brake assembly and get that just moved out of the way and then as just said i'm just going to get rid of the exhaust in a second so that will be gone shortly that will give me unfettered access to the engine then okay so just popped off the um heel guard so i could get into here good news is that one came out these ones however somebody has tried to take them off before so it's nice and loose but they are rounded um hmm I'm going to see if I can get uh, something. I, I need I need really to get into there just so that I don't damage this. I'm going to start taking the exhaust apart. It's um, annoying. I'm not sure how I'm going to get that out. Let me have a play. So um, my favourite way of getting these off is a star drive you hammer it in because this is a bit soft i'm gonna have to get new ones of these anyway so the main bit is that i can get these off so pop this in as i've just done on that one give it a good hammer and then hopefully uh, the hammer in action shocks the seized fitting which is evidently what's caused somebody to have to round it beforehand and i'll be able to get it off so i'll try and film this one not pretty but it means that we don't have this nice carbon piece from the exhaust damaged um, this is not untypical these um, sort of screw clips that are used on a number of different bikes they're just really bad quality metal and then they corrode the bolts get stuck and that's why people end up rounding them off so However, we've got it off. Right, um, what I need to do, pop off the exhaust uh, clamps at the top, get rid of all the springs. Um, so I've got one here and one down here. And hopefully I should be able to pull off the rear part of the section. I've got a bolt there. 
um, and there is nothing else holding that in. So let's do that. pipes had water inside them I don't I don't think that's an issue with the engine I'll certainly I'm hoping not um, right uh, let me switch the camera off tidy everything up only a couple more jobs left to do okay fun and games time need to get off this manifold and the horizontal pipe as well um, I can get to the back too relatively easy I'm just going to drop the oil cooler off momentarily to give me access to the front bolt there and we'll pop them off um, I won't film that I'll just do it off camera because it's so uh, awkward to get a decent angle on it I wouldn't be able to film it very well but there's three there's one at the top and one at each bottom corner and likewise here you got one two and then three there so let me just film that off camera okay a bit more fun here guys this uh exhaust was also full of water um and i've just noticed as well that there is a hole i mean it's got really heavy corrosion inside now interestingly i mean it made a massive mess when it came off there I snapped two of the bolts because they were so rotten uh, managed to save the final one but not much fun but it doesn't look um, now my initial reaction was perhaps this might be a head gasket issue but doesn't appear to show any signs of moisture in there at the moment but I've got a feeling we might find some surprises when we take this head off. Now, based on the difficulty I've had and the fact that, I don't know if you can see it, that those nuts are really rotten, I'm going to carefully remove the engine with this one in situ. You can see in there there's quite a lot of corrosion on that pipe as well. So, okay, question time. I know this comes up quite often from people because I don't normally get full bikes to do. Um, I'm going to make this a natural break here. I'm going to drain the oil off camera because it doesn't really matter. Now, do you want me to take the heads off with the engine in situ to show you how that happens? Or should I just drop the engine as I normally would and continue the work off the bike on the bench? So stick your suggestions in the comments down below um chuck us a like if you're not subscribed to the channel please hit that subscribe button and notification bell we will be back soon with part two of this uh, diagnostic strip so i hope you enjoyed the content so far not wanting to be rude here's a goodbye to the camera see you in the next video cheers then bye